Hello, Blizzard of the Internet, and welcome to this video on automation, where I'll be attempting to build a competitor or rival to the 1951 Hudson Hornet. Now, I'm thinking this is probably the most relevant body, because although it says wagon, we can get it as a normal seeding, and it is quite large, you'll see 45 inches, I think is the length, or no, that's a year, actually. My confusion, but either way, I don't know. 2.9 meters then, maybe this one's longer, more American. Although having said that, the Hudson Hornet isn't that much different in width from a uh, Mark IV Voxel Astra, so it, yeah, what can you call on it? Now, sadly that's a two-seater, so I don't think that's really a relevant option. Now, what else do we have? We have this, or this one. I kind of like that one, but I think this one's more American, so we'll go for that. I believe there's a passenger variant, so it's not the end of the world that it is a van to begin with. We can go with aluminium, and it'll be a ladder, or no, steel ladder. I'm forgetting what year we're going with. It's a steel chassis, although, ah, oh, steel panels, yes. I'm confusing chassis and panels, and that looks like it's got a lot of plastic there. Surely that's not why. Maybe that's just what steel looks like in certain circumstances. It does look like plastic to me, though. Either way, we'll have double wishbone on the front and solid axle coil on the rear, maybe. Now, this is an old ladder-framed vehicle. It's not the same as the unitary of the Hornet. I've decided to make a different decision there. And it looks so small. It'll get bigger, though, don't worry. Now... <laughs> Oh yes, look at that. It's got something on the woof there. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but we can have the what it calls SUV. So that's slightly concerning. Yeah, I think we need another body. I think it's just too high off the ground. Try this one maybe. Yeah, this should do the job. It reminds me of the Ford Woody in Forza. <laughs> to be honest, kind of like that. Uh, if we go on the later stages, we can modify the body. We can have the coupe, but again, that's much more like a pickup truck than I would like. We could turn this into a van, kind of a more stylized one. It's not much lower, though. Maybe cars would just like this back then. We can go with a standard saloon, which is probably what I'll go with. And we can mess around with these things. I think bring that out, bring that in. Maybe that will give it a bit more style to how it's done we can bring these out just a little if we need the extra width in the tires to probably bring the rear out as well to go over the front and the entire tail can stretch out just a bit hopefully just to give us that balance i'm looking for can't do much with the woof though and the pillars and stuff so they'll have to stay the same we can have all kinds of things here Primary body can be... Ah, uh, I just want to see how it changes. So if we go with that colour for primary body, then secondary body? Ha! <laughs> oh dear. I don't, I don't know what's happening here. Am I building a Harley Quinn or something? Ah, uh, looks like we can only change the body and the bonnet. Okay. For now, Failways did it. No, I did this car. This is my car because it's too good for him. <laughs> anything anything good is immediately made by me, that's a rule. But the fairways colour is what goes on anything that I'm not happy with. Because <laughs> fairways did it naturally. That's why it's orange. Because he did it, not me. Or well, kind of, it's supposed to be orange. No, I don't want to delete pretty pink. Why, why would you even ask that? <laughs> it's not feeling very good to me today. Asking if I want to delete pretty pink. Of course not. We can make these lights a little bigger. I think. Try messing around with which different ones. I think they're all the same. I don't know why there's different variants to be honest. Now there's only so much I can do. I think I've more or less fitted these about as best as I can. So that's something. I can make them bigger. But they just look so out of alignment and just a little wrong in how they fit on the car. 
There we go. I think that's about as good as I'm going to get. Now for the grill, I'm not sure where I want to go with this. So I'm probably going to do something stupid. Please forgive me for this. Now it will look horrible. I'm going to come back to all this later though. So it will, it will look better. We just need those. We need some intake. We need a badge, which we can get down here. I'm thinking we can have the ghost, maybe. Yeah, let's have this one. Kind of a happy ghost. Happy ghost motors. I'm thinking if we had a chrome line that would go up from the ghost, that would be pretty good. Well, a bonnet ornament would really suit this kind of car, but I'm not sure we have those in this version of automation. The other version doesn't even work on this PC, so that's an annoyance. Oh dear. Trying to get this to work, it's not really wanting to go where I want it to. That that works well enough, I think. <laughs> Flows with the body and everything. Now, I won't bother with number plates right now. We do need some door handles. So, find some hopefully vintage ones. And a fuel cap. Yeah, if only we could put a chrome one on, I don't think we can, unfortunately. You can sit there. <laughs> Looks so out of place. But we can hopefully get the handles. There we go. I'm thinking if we go with just plain, simple, functional handles, they should do the job. They're not chrome, though. Can we get chrome variants? It really would be a sign of the times if it was chrome, so that's why I want it to be. There we go. I think it looks okay for a start. It's clearly far from finished, but then, I don't know. We do need some indicators. That's one thing I'm noticing right now. So, I think these ones, they fit quite well with it. As I say, I'm going to go through it. This stuff may move, but for the time being, I've got all of the basics on the design. Other than the tail lights, I keep finding things I've not done. Now, these should just be fairly basic ones, really. I'm not sure they would have had integrated reversing lights in the 1940s. Probably not, but... I say 1940s, it's the early 50s at this point, but they probably wouldn't have had... This stuff all fancily integrated together at this point. Still, I think it works well enough. And there we go. <laughs> There's our most basic car. Let's look at the front. The front's less painful than the rear. Now, the engine I have built because I had some spare time while my video was exporting. One of the videos was exporting. And I built a 180 horsepower 3.5 litre V8. Now, the Hudson did have an inline six, and this is, although it's a V8, it's in many ways very similar, fully cast iron. Overhead cam, whereas the Hudson may be a push rod, in order to make the power from a more compact engine. It's cast iron, I could go with cast iron flat plane, which is a little lighter, and I think otherwise identical, so I'll go with that. Don't know why I didn't do it before, to be honest, and yeah. It is pushed to get it to 180, that's for sure. Torque is pretty reasonable as well. Although it's never going to set the world on fire, it's not the worst. I have twin carburetors as well. I think that's the other notable difference other than the heads that you can notice over Hudson. And that this is a V8, obviously not an inline six. Now, I've tried to sort this out, so it's the best for the performance index, as you've seen. And it took a lot of tweaking the engine's fine adjustments, but it worked. Cast iron works just fine. It's almost a square engine, but it's ever so slightly bore bias. And I'm still happy with it, you know. I've made the power from a much smaller engine, so that's made me happy in itself. And I can claim to be an early innovator of a V8, even though really I'm just from the future. Let's lay it one anyway. Yeah, I can see that's driving my recorder mad. It's going into, like, the red on the recording, so... I might have to mess with this a bit. 
actually, if I muffle it, because now I've got two reverse flow mufflers. This should be fairly quiet then. I don't know why it's so loud and obnoxious. Yeah, I might have to mess with the audio volume on that part of a clip because it's just so loud. Now, we could go with longitudinal front-wheel drive, but no. We'll be copying the Hudson in that particular respect and making it rear drive. Should be a fairly good riding car, though, with a ladder chassis and... Uh, coil springs? Would I say coil on the rear is a suspension type, so I'd say springs all around as opposed to leafs on the rear, which the Hudson most likely has. I mean, I've not looked into the really fine details, but... It more likely does than not. We'll go with a three speed as well. The Hudson has one of those, or maybe a two speed to save a bit of money. So, two speed is lighter and it costs less, and we can produce more of them. I can't really see a downside to that, but then if we're investing in a good V8, then it's hard to see why we would go for so few. But either way, I think I'll just move on for now, see what it's capable of, and if it if it is a very capable engine and fairly economical as well, I will probably leave the two-speed on there. We want a medium, or we'll actually want sport compound, I would say, because it's a very powerful vehicle for the era. So we'll want sport tyres to put that down as best as possible. 175s as well, the widest tyres we can get. Can we tweak these and fit wider? No, I don't think we can. What's the smallest tyres we can get on it then? For, you know, sportiness? Oh, actually, I've had a better idea. I think 650 is where it started. No, we can't do anything like that. Can we? I'm trying to find a balance. But I fear I'm just messing it up even worse. Right, so... We can fit slightly larger wheels if we have huge huge tires yeah sure i guess we'll have to do that then because i don't know it works or or maybe just maybe that'll give us even what yes 185s that's the way to go smaller wheels still but allowing us to fit 185s on it so it looks like that's a minimum tire and wheel size we can get with minimum tyre size, maximum wheel size, sorry, we could get 185s with. They should be pretty good for the era. I want to move them out just a little though. Remember being an older car, I can't just stick wider tyres on. I'd like to say that is an easy solution, but sadly it's not. You just can't do it in the way you might hope. And the rear is very wide here. Maybe that's good for... Traction, it's hard to say. I don't want to mess with the front right now, though. If I could bring the rear track in just a little. How wide is that rear track? Yeah, that can probably go in just a, just a tiny bit. There we go. And um, we could probably bring that in just a tiny bit. So, all in all, that works reasonably well. Moving on. Come on, <laughs> arrow. And, yeah, we only have drum brakes available. Still, we can fit reasonably large 250s on the front. And we should be able to fit, how about 225s on the way? 230 maybe? No, 225s. They're not great brakes, but they're the best the 19, early 1950s have to offer, what can I say? This is probably one of the early examples of a performance car. Let's be honest, 180 was a lot of power back then. And my tail lights have gone mad. I'll fix them. But we do have an under tray. I don't think we'll bother with that. I don't think we need one. Not to sell it in this era. We can have six seats. That's presumably two bench seats. So I'll go with that. And we can go with a... Um, I don't know. I think it's a premium car, the Hudson. So we'll go with premium. And... We can have about as good safety as you can get for the era. I did try build one of these before and it was incredibly, incredibly light. Now it's just a premium saloon, so as stupid as that looks, I'll have to just assume it's going to sink down a bit when it's actually lowered onto the ground because, I don't know, it's just, you need a comfortable car, but then at the same time I want sports suspension. It's hard to say, I think, 
I know I know it's probably going to mess something up, but I'm just going to lower it just a little and then leave the standard suspension like that. I could probably go to normal actually. How does that nah, not quite what I'm looking for. Thinking if I go for about three hundred millimeters of wide height, that's still quite a bit. Maybe even 290.3 that seems about a good compromise to make so there's our vehicle in its current state it apparently does 94.7 miles per hour maybe tra maybe transmission limited it does weigh 11.45 kilos now the what's it called hudson hornet weighs 1800 kilograms i don't know how but it just seems to be that everything in this game is so much lighter and the luxury interior and stuff, unlike a modern car, doesn't add that much weight. So there's not really a way I can think of making it more realistic at this point. 14 seconds 0 to 60. Oh dear. Although I can get it quicker. I believe it's just past 12 seconds in the Hudson. Miles per gallon is surprisingly good. I'm, I'm actually able to get a lot of speed from a two-speed transmission with this. Yeah, I'll leave it with a two-speed then. I could get it quicker, but there's just no need. I think we're already beating the Hudson, so there's no need to go any quicker. Maybe we could even go with an automatic. Hmm. It's heavier, though. <laughs> yeah, a two-speed transmission. You only have to change gear once or twice with it. You don't have to change gear more than that, so it's never going to be that easy. The engine looks bigger than I would have expected considering its small size either it's just because the engine bay is bigger than it looks or this is a smaller body either way i'm just working with what's available to me right now maybe it is a smaller car than the hudson but what can i say if we actually go back here maybe it'll tell us so no it doesn't tell us the specific dimension so not much i can say about that but anyway, the miles per gallon I did see back on the transmission phase or stage of building was pretty good actually. 13.5, but that's for a very fast car. So, you know, I'm not complaining with what I've got from this. If I look at the Hudson, the Hudson makes 145 horsepower. We make 180. The Hudson apparently makes 257 pounds feet of torque, which is... Probably far more in newton meters, but this is a smaller engine, so what do you expect? And that makes it at 1800 RPM. So, yeah, ours is a much higher revving engine as well. But that's how you make power from a small engine, regardless of the era. If, it, if you want a smaller engine to make the power, it's generally higher revving, regardless of engine type and everything else. Still, I'm hoping this can set a half-decent time. You know, it's not going to be... The quickest in the world but it should be okay it's fairly well balanced reasonably light and it's got a decent amount of power 55 percent run that's not too bad you know it's helped a lot by the smaller engine some american cars are a lot worse than that but anyway i'll take it around the track now and i'll return when i have done that okay so i return with a time which is actually a 258.39 time so it's held up reasonably well for such an old car from 1951. I've also done some redesigning. The grill has gone a bit funny up here, but really I'm happy with it for now and where I've taken it. You can see the engine through here. The carburetor arrangement has changed. I'll get onto that in a moment after I've just shown you the wear quickly and my mouse is on completely wrong monitor. There we go. It's got the ghost logo as well as all your relevant lights there that you should need and a scoop which has been used as a handle quite neatly I think. I could change the wheels but I somehow forgot that completely. So we can just go here and we can add, yeah let's add those ones slightly nicer than the basic wheels I think. Anyway, as I was getting to, the carburetor arrangement has changed. It is now quad eco carburetor with performance intake because I just wanted to get better economy out of this and it seemed like a fairly straightforward way of doing it without compromising power. If power has compromised, it's by such a tiny amount as with the torque because it seems to be making the same figures to me. 
Now, if we move on, though, we will see, though, we, we've got 14.3 miles per gallon, which is 0.2 of a miles per gallon off the Hudson. Admittedly, it is a far lighter vehicle, but that's still not bad for a much more powerful car, something that's however much... 35, 34 horsepower, more powerful. You'll see that we do have to have a longer economy gear going off there. I could do better, but it would compromise the speed of a vehicle so heavily. I'm happy with 11.1 seconds, though, as it is. The tyres are actually hard long life as well. They were part of what helped me with the miles per gallon. You'll see it drops immediately when I start putting the sportier tyres on. And it just didn't seem to have any effect on performance. It may have slowed it down slightly around the track, but it's not exactly a hugely quick vehicle to begin with. I have made the brakes slightly sporty. That didn't seem to do anything, but I'm still not going to bother changing them now. I could get into it a lot, but it will be for such tiny amounts of speed on a vehicle where it doesn't really matter. I have added some brake airflow, though, so they don't overheat quite so easily. And all this stuff is the same. I could try putting more quality on, but it's a bit late for that, let's be honest, since I've already built the car and taken it around the test track and everything. For markets, so though, it does well for a premium family sports car, actually. Very well there, and kind of goes into a muscle car. And it's got a V8, so that would make sense, yes. Very good. And I'm happy with it. You know, it's between the... Um, updated Volkswagen Astro, which you may see, uh, Volkswagen, uh, basically it was a parody of the Golf and the Vauxhall Astra of sorts, and then I had to update it to 2007 standards, which is 56 years in the future by this standard, so, you know, it's more powerful and rear-wheel drive and everything, but the fact that we're beating a much more modern car with this has to speak volumes of how well it's gone together, I guess. Not sure how that suspension will be for comfort. There shouldn't be anything particularly wrong with it, though, even though it's not the best in the world. And the front double wishbone should be fine, too. So, you know, it looks like a 1932 Ford a little bit. But that's fine, you know. It's an early car in the grand scheme of things. You see, I've called it the Hudson Hornen because I... Really don't have that much imagination at the moment. It's just a standard edition with the 3.5 litre V8, as you'll see. So I've not done anything too ridiculous with this. The carburettors were a slightly crazy thing, but then they work for getting the economy I would like from this car. So I'm not complaining about them. If we just go on overview. The weight balance is slightly more frontwards, but I've not reset the suspension up because I can't be bothered when I've got the wide height just right and everything to go messing with it. Weight is 11.62 kilograms now, so I'm thinking I'm going to leave this video here. And as I was saying, I kind of interrupted my own sentence, but it's also just below Friendly Gym, which was a front-wheel drive. And I should probably add that this is actually rear-wheel drive, but then there's the R key, and that will stop my recording, and oh dear, I've made a mess for myself. It is below the tortoise by, give or take, about five seconds, so... That's not too bad. Well, that was the original and pretty terrible tortoise, might I mention, with a V6 pushrod engine that made not much sense at all. But still, it's a 1951, so I think I can use that as an excuse for everything. But still, I'm going to leave it here for now, and hopefully my next attempt should maybe be improving on this car or something. That would be an interesting ordeal if I had to improve it for 1960. But until then, I'm going to say goodbye until another day.